CD one. Unit one. Make small talk. Page three. Exercise C. Photo story. Read and listen to a conversation between two participants at the meeting in Bangkok. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Teresa Segovia from the Santiago office. Sawateka. Where did you learn the why? You're Chilean, aren't you? Yes, I am. But I have a friend in Chile from Thailand. Well, sawadee krab. Nice to meet you, Miss Segovia. I'm Surat Likpai. No need to be so formal. Please call me Terry. And please call me Surat. Okay, Surat. Do you mind my asking you a question about that, though? Not at all. Is it customary in Thailand for people to be on a first name basis? Well, at company meetings in English, always. In other situations, though, people tend to be a little more formal. It's probably best to watch what others do. You know what they say when in Rome. Mm -hmm. Do as the Romans do. Page four, conversation model, exercise A. Read and listen to two people meeting and making small talk. Good morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? It really is. By the way, I'm Kazuko Toshinaga. I'm Jane Quit. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Do you mind if I call you Kazuko? Absolutely not. Please do, and please call me Jane. Page four, conversation model, exercise B, rhythm and intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Good morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? It really is. By the way, I'm Kazuko Toshinaga. I'm Jane Quit. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Do you mind if I call you Kazuko? Absolutely not. Please do. And please call me Jane. Page four. Asking about proper address. Listen and repeat. Do you mind if I call you Kazuko? Would it be rude to call you Kazuko? What would you like to be called? How do you prefer to be addressed? Do you use Ms. or Mrs.? Page five. Pronunciation. Intonation of tag questions. Exercise A. Rising intonation usually indicates that the speaker is confirming the correctness of information. Read and listen. One. People use first names here, don't they? Two. That meeting was great, wasn't it? Three. It's a beautiful day for a walk, isn't it? Now listen again and repeat. People use first names here, don't they? That meeting was great, wasn't it? It's a beautiful day for a walk, isn't it? Page five, pronunciation, intonation of tag questions, exercise B. Falling intonation usually indicates that the speaker expects the listener to agree. 
Read and listen. 1. People use first names here, don't they? 2. That meeting was great, wasn't it? 3. It's a beautiful day for a walk, isn't it? Now listen again and repeat. People use first names here, don't they? That meeting was great, wasn't it? It's a beautiful day for a walk, isn't it? Page 7. Conversation Model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone describing a busy schedule. So how was your day? Unbelievably busy. By 9 o'clock, I had taken the placement test, registered for class, and bought my books. That's a lot to do before 9. That was nothing. At 10, I had a meeting across town. But by 1, I had already arrived back at school for my class. What did you do about lunch? Well, when I got to class, I hadn't eaten yet, so I just got a snack. Wow. I'll bet you're pretty hungry now. Page 7. Conversation Model. Exercise B. Rhythm and Intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. So how was your day? Unbelievably busy. By 9 o'clock, I had taken the placement test, registered for class, and bought my books. That's a lot to do before 9. That was nothing. At 10, I had a meeting across town, but by 1, I had already arrived back at school for my class. What did you do about lunch? Well, when I got to class, I hadn't eaten yet, so I just got a snack. Wow. I'll bet you're pretty hungry now. Page 7. Intensifiers. Listen and repeat. Unbelievably. Incredibly. Really. So. Pretty. Page 8. Before you listen. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Manners and etiquette. Read and listen. Etiquette. Cultural literacy. Table manners. Punctuality. Impolite. Offensive. Customary. Taboo. Now listen again and repeat. Etiquette. Cultural literacy. Table manners. Punctuality. Impolite. Offensive. Customary. Taboo. Page 8. Listening Comprehension. Exercise A. Listen for main ideas. Look at the subjects on the chart. Listen to three calls from a radio show. 
Check the subjects that are discussed during each call. Call 1. Arturo and Jetrine. Good morning, world. This is Millicent McKay in Brussels with today's Worldwide Cultural Literacy Update. If you're new to the programme, here's the format. In the studio, three people take your phone calls and answer your questions about etiquette in their countries. Today's guests are Jetrine from Thailand, Nadia from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and Sujit from Nepal. We're all first name here, so let me welcome Jetrine, Nadia, and Sujit. Sorry, Cap, Millicent. Good morning. I'm Jetrine from Thailand. Hello. It's nice to be with you. I'm Nadia from Dubai. And good morning, Millicent, Jatreen and Nadia. Sujit here from Nepal. OK, let's get started. I see our first caller is on the line. Hello, Artura from Montevideo. You're on the air. Good morning. Actually, good evening. It's 10.30 at night here in Montevideo. But here's my question. I'm traveling on business to Thailand next month and I'll be working with Thai business managers from my company. What should I know? Hello, Arturo. Jetrin here. Just a couple of things. First, a taboo. Don't touch anyone's head, not even a child's. Hmm? Well, I don't ordinarily touch people's heads. But if you don't mind my asking, what's wrong with touching someone's head? Well, we believe the head is where the person's soul lives. So it's very disrespectful and offensive to touch a person's head. Any other tips? Well, when you are seated... Be sure not to cross your legs in such a way that others can see the bottom of your foot. Actually, I knew that. But don't worry, it's good to be reminded. I do have one more specific question before I hang up. Sure. What's that? In Uruguay, it's customary to shake hands, and I know Thai people greet each other with a why. Will it seem impolite for a foreigner to do the why? And what happens if I don't do it right? Will that be offensive? Absolutely not. Just put the palms of your hands together on your chest and bow slightly. Say, Sawadikap. For the women listening, you say, Sawadika. You will warm our hearts with that. Don't worry if you don't do it exactly the way Thais do it. And don't worry about the pronunciation. Have a wonderful trip to Thailand. Try to do some sightseeing. And taste our wonderful food. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jatrine and Arturo, for a good lesson in cultural literacy. Let's take a break and then another call. Call 2. Hiroko and Nadia. Welcome back, listeners. This is Millicent McKay with a worldwide town meeting answering all your questions about do's and taboos around the world. Let's say hello to Hiroko from Osaka, Japan. Hiroko, you're on the air. Thank you, Millicent. My husband and I are going to Dubai. He's a banker and has business there, but I'm going with him as a tourist. I'm very interested in all kinds of culture, and I understand Dubai is very different from Japan. I have three questions. Hello, Hiroko. Nadia on the line. Thanks, Nadia. If I'm alone, can I walk on the street or drive a car? When we went to Saudi Arabia, Women were not permitted to go out alone or drive. Absolutely. As a woman traveler, you will have no difficulty getting around, even if you are alone. You can drive, and as long as you dress modestly, you can wear whatever you like. Second question. I don't speak any Arabic. Again, no problem. As you know, Arabic is the official language of Dubai, but English is commonly used in tourism and commerce. You speak very good English, Nadia. Where did you learn it? I actually am an English teacher. I learned my English in the United States at the University of Wisconsin. And my last question. I'm an amateur photographer. Will I be able to take pictures in Dubai? Well, yes, but you should know that it is considered offensive to take pictures of Muslim women here. Oh, I'm glad I asked. What about pictures of men? Well, yes. Just be sure to ask permission. I don't know how to thank you. I'm really looking forward to the trip. We'll be right back with our final call. Call 3. Javier and Sujit. 
I think we have time for one more caller. Javier from Mexico City, welcome to the show. How can we help you? I'm going to Nepal next month on an international trek. I'll be staying with a Nepalese family for a weekend, and I want to be sure I don't offend anyone. Mexico is very different from Nepal. Well, let's ask Sujit to comment. Hi, Javier. Let's talk about table manners. First of all, Nepalese don't usually use spoons, forks, or knives. No? So how do the people eat? How will I eat? Well, your host will eat with their right hand, never the left hand. But I'm sure they'll provide you with spoons and forks. If they're welcoming foreigners into their home, they'll want you to be comfortable. But remember one important taboo. Beef is strictly forbidden as a food in both Hindu and Buddhist homes. Our typical food, however, is wonderful and very flavorful and healthy. That's great, because I'm Mexican, and we have great food in Mexico, too. I love good food when I travel. Sujit, I'm very interested in culture, but I don't know much about Hinduism and Buddhism. What can you tell me? Well, if you visit a Hindu temple or a Buddhist shrine, you must remove your shoes, or if you prefer, you can wear open sandals. Check first. In some Hindu temples, non-Hindus can't enter. And very important, don't take leather things near the temple. And if you want to take a picture, be sure to ask before using your camera. Thanks so much. I feel very prepared now. My pleasure. Well, that's all we have time for today. Until next time, this is Millicent McKay in Brussels reminding you that in today's world, cultural literacy is an essential survival skill. Page 8. Listening Comprehension. Exercise B. Listen to summarize. Listen again. On a separate sheet of paper, take notes about the calls. Then, with a partner, write a summary of each call. Use the vocabulary. Call 1. Arturo and Jetrine. Good morning, world. This is Millicent McKay in Brussels with today's Worldwide Cultural Literacy Update. If you're new to the program, here's the format. In the studio, three people take your phone calls and answer your questions about etiquette in their countries. Today's guests are Jatrine from Thailand, Nadia from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and Sujit from Nepal. We're all first name here, so let me welcome Jatrine, Nadia, and Sujit. Sorry, Cap, Millicent. Good morning. I'm Jatrine from Thailand. Hello, it's nice to be with you. I'm Nadia from Dubai. And good morning, Milisan, Jatrin and Nadia. Sujit here from Nepal. OK, let's get started. I see our first caller is on the line. Hello, Artura from Montevideo. You're on the air. Good morning. Actually, good evening. It's 10.30 at night here in Montevideo. But here's my question. I'm traveling on business to Thailand next month, and I'll be working with Thai business managers from my company. What should I know? Hello, Arturo. Jetrin here. Just a couple of things. First, a taboo. Don't touch anyone's head, not even a child's. Hmm? Well, I don't ordinarily touch people's heads. But if you don't mind my asking, what's wrong with touching someone's head? Well, we believe the head is where the person's soul lives, so it's very disrespectful and offensive to touch a person's head. Any other tips? Well, when you are seated, be sure not to cross your legs in such a way that others can see the bottom of your foot. Actually, I knew that. But don't worry, it's good to be reminded. I do have one more specific question before I hang up. Sure. What's that? In Uruguay, it's customary to shake hands and I know Thai people greet each other with a Y. Will it seem impolite for a foreigner to do the Y? And what happens if I don't do it right? Will that be offensive? Absolutely not. Just put the palms of your hands together on your chest and bow slightly. Say, Sawati Kap. For the women listening, you say, Sawati Ka. You will warm our hearts with that. Don't worry if you don't do it exactly the way Thais do it. And don't worry about the pronunciation. Have a wonderful trip to Thailand. Try to do some sightseeing. And taste our wonderful food. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jatrin and Arturo, for a good lesson in cultural literacy. Let's take a break and then another call. Call 2. Hiroko and Nadia. 
Welcome back, listeners. This is Millicent McKay with a worldwide town meeting answering all your questions about do's and taboos around the world. Let's say hello to Hiroko from Osaka, Japan. Hiroko, you're on the air. Thank you, Millicent. My husband and I are going to Dubai. He's a banker and has business there, but I'm going with him as a tourist. I'm very interested in all kinds of culture. And I understand Dubai is very different from Japan. I have three questions. Hello, Hiroko. Nadia on the line. Thanks, Nadia. If I'm alone, can I walk on the street or drive a car? When we went to Saudi Arabia, women were not permitted to go out alone or drive. Absolutely. As a woman traveler, you will have no difficulty getting around, even if you are alone. You can drive, and as long as you dress modestly, you can wear whatever you like. Second question. I don't speak any Arabic. Again, no problem. As you know, Arabic is the official language of Dubai, but English is commonly used in tourism and commerce. You speak very good English, Nadia. Where did you learn it? I actually am an English teacher. I learned my English in the United States at the University of Wisconsin. And my last question. I'm an amateur photographer. Will I be able to take pictures in Dubai? Well, yes, but you should know that it is considered offensive to take pictures of Muslim women here. Oh, I'm glad I asked. What about pictures of men? Well, yes, just be sure to ask permission. I don't know how to thank you. I'm really looking forward to the trip. We'll be right back with our final call. Call three, Javier and Sujit. I think we have time for one more caller. Javier from Mexico City, welcome to the show. How can we help you? I'm going to Nepal next month on an international trek. I will be staying with a Nepalese family for a weekend, and I want to be sure I don't offend anyone. Mexico is very different from Nepal. Well, let's ask Sujit to comment. Hi, Javier. Let's talk about table manners. First of all, Nepalese don't usually use spoons, forks, or knives. No? So, how do the people eat? How will I eat? Well, your host will eat with their right hand, never the left hand. But I'm sure they'll provide you with spoons and forks. If they're welcoming foreigners into their home, they'll want you to be comfortable. But remember one important taboo beef is strictly forbidden as a food in both Hindu and Buddhist homes. Our typical food, however, is wonderful and very flavorful and healthy. That's great because I'm Mexican and we have great food in Mexico too. I love good food when I travel. Sujit, I'm very interested in culture, but I don't know much about Hinduism and Buddhism. What can you tell me? Well, if you visit a Hindu temple or a Buddhist shrine, you must remove your shoes, or if you prefer, you can wear open sandals. Check first in some Hindu temples, non Hindus can't enter. And very important, don't take leather things near the temple. And if you want to take a picture, be sure to ask before using your camera. Thanks so much. I feel very prepared now. My pleasure. Well, that's all we have time for today. Until next time, this is Millicent McKay in Brussels reminding you that in today's world, cultural literacy is an essential survival skill. Page 10. Reading. Read and listen. Today, Global Culture is interviewing Eugenia Hartley of Jackson, Mississippi, in the U.S., about changes to culture. Ms. Hartley, culture has changed a bit since you were growing up in the 40s, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. And maybe more so for me than for others because Jackson is in the South, which was pretty socially conservative when I was a young girl. Please tell us about some of the changes you have personally experienced. My heavens. Well, the New South is so different from the Old South in a lot of good ways, as everyone knows. But since you ask me personally, it would probably be dating customs, the way young people talk to their elders, table manners. Okay. How have those things changed? Well, for example, when I was growing up, the family dinner hour was the one time in the day when the family sat down together, and it was a special time. Today, that's changed. 
In many families, there is no dinner hour. Kids eat snacks or fast food all day. Moms are out in the workforce and don't have time to make a proper meal. And there are so many activities that it seems like no one has time. In my day, children were more respectful and quiet at the table. We spoke when we were spoken to. We didn't put our elbows on the table, and we dressed nicely. No one came to the dinner table in shorts or jeans the way they do today. That is different, isn't it? You mentioned dating. How has that changed? Well, today, I see boys and girls on dates at the mall. They can't be more than 12 or 13 years old. I wasn't allowed to go out on a proper date until I was 16. And when I finally was allowed to date, my parents didn't let me go out with a boy they hadn't already met. Oh, and I had a definite curfew. I had to be home by 11. If I came in late, I was grounded for at least a month. It was a little different for my brother, though. I guess there was a bit of a double standard. He could go out on dates when he was 16, but his curfew wasn't as strict as mine. He was allowed to stay out until midnight. And you mentioned the way young people addressed their elders. How has that changed? Well, today you hear teens, even children, calling adults by their first names. We had to address adults as sir or ma'am. And we always use Mr. and Mrs. I suppose that sounds a little old-fashioned today, doesn't it? Maybe so. Thanks so much, Miss Hartley, for an interesting interview. Page 12. Exercise A. Listen to the conversations between people introducing themselves. Check the statement that correctly paraphrases the main idea. Conversation 1. Good morning. I'm Dr. Ana Montoya. Good morning, Dr. Montoya. Please, call me Ana. Conversation 2. Hi, I'm Larry Lockhart. Hi, I'm Winnie Denman. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. By the way, how would you prefer to be addressed? Mrs. Denman would be fine. Conversation 3. Excuse me. I'm Sofia Perish. I'm looking for Martin Page. Certainly, Ms. Perish. I'm Ramona Wright. Martin's right over there. Come, I'll introduce you. Thanks. And would it be rude if I called him Martin? No, that's fine. And while you're at it, feel free to call me Ramona. And please call me Sofia. Conversation 4. Hi, I'm Robert Morse, the new English instructor. Oh, hello, Dr. Morse. I'm Laura Lane, the department secretary. I'll take you to your class. By the way, how would you like to be introduced to the class? Well, what's the custom here? We're pretty informal. The policy is generally first name. We think it makes for a more conversational English class. Do you mind? Not at all. Robert's fine with me. Conversation 5 Hello, I'm Mayumi Sato. I'm pre-registered for the conference. Certainly. Let me make up your name badge. Do you prefer Ms. or Mrs.? Actually, neither. I use doctor. Of course, Dr. Sato. Here you go. Thanks. Unit 2. Health Matters. Page 15. Exercise C. Photo Story. Read and listen to someone with a dental emergency during a trip. I need to see a dentist as soon as possible. I think it's an emergency. I was wondering if you might be able to recommend someone who speaks English. Let me check. Actually, there is one not far from here. Would you like me to make an appointment for you? If you could, thanks. I'm in a lot of pain. So, I hear you're from overseas. From Ecuador. Thanks for fitting me in. Luckily, I had a cancellation. So, what brings you in today? Well, this tooth is killing me. When did it first begin to hurt? It's been bothering me since last night. Let's have a look. Open wide. 
Ah. Well, let's take an x-ray and see what's going on. Page 16. Vocabulary. Describing symptoms. Exercise A. Read and listen. I feel dizzy. I feel nauseous. I feel weak. I feel short of breath. I've been vomiting. I've been coughing. I've been sneezing. I've been wheezing. I have pain in my chest. I have pain in my hip. I have pain in my ribs. I have pain in my stomach. Now listen again and repeat. I feel dizzy. I feel nauseous. I feel weak. I feel short of breath. I've been vomiting. I've been coughing. I've been sneezing. I've been wheezing. I have pain in my chest. I have pain in my hip. I have pain in my ribs. I have pain in my stomach. Page 16. Vocabulary. Exercise C. Listen to activate vocabulary. Listen and check the symptoms each patient describes. Conversation 1. What seems to be the problem today, Mrs. Gillis? Well, I've been feeling pretty dizzy for the last few days. I have to lie down all the time. I feel really weak and I have so little energy. I can't even make myself lunch or dinner. I'm sorry to hear that. And I can hardly walk upstairs. I'm so short of breath whenever I try. Any pain? Funny you should ask. I have pain in my shoulder, too. Conversation 2. Is there anything bothering you today, Mr. Baker? Well, when I woke up this morning, I felt terrible. I had this pain in the back of my neck, and I thought I'd better get in to see the doctor right away. Have you been coughing? A lot, actually. I've had a bad cold for over a week now. That might explain the pain you've been feeling in your neck. I'm going to give you something for that cold. Conversation 3. The doctor will be right with you, Miss Rice. Have you not been feeling well? Not great, actually, and I've been sneezing like crazy. Oh, that's too bad. Anyway, today my back is killing me, so I thought, that's it, I'd better come in. Come, I'll take you in to see the doctor. Conversation 4. You're here to see Dr. Fox? Yes, I am. I've been really sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Have you been nauseous? Oh, yeah. Any vomiting? Yes. I'm afraid I've been throwing up everything I eat. Any dizziness? Not really, just nauseousness. Well, Dr. Fox will be with you in a moment. Conversation 5. You're Ms. Perlman? Yes, I am. The doctor will be with you soon. Can I ask you a few questions? Okay. What brings you in today? Well, I've been wheezing a lot since yesterday. I don't know what's wrong. It's really annoying. Are you allergic to anything? 
Not that I can think of. Any other symptoms? Not really. Conversation 6. Mr. Rashid? That's me. Hello, Mr. Rashid. The doctor will see you in just a moment. Are you in a lot of pain? Well, my hip has been bothering me a lot for the past two days. It hurts all the time. Hmm. Did you fall or have an accident? Not that I can remember. Any pain anywhere else? In your knees? Your elbows? No. Listen again. If the patient has pain, write where it is. Conversation 1. What seems to be the problem today, Mrs. Gillis? Well, I've been feeling pretty dizzy for the last few days. I have to lie down all the time. I feel really weak and I have so little energy. I can't even make myself lunch or dinner. I'm sorry to hear that. And I can hardly walk upstairs. I'm so short of breath whenever I try. Any pain? Funny you should ask. I have pain in my shoulder, too. Conversation 2 Is there anything bothering you today, Mr. Baker? Well, when I woke up this morning, I felt terrible. I had this pain in the back of my neck, and I thought I'd better get in to see the doctor right away. Have you been coughing? A lot, actually. I've had a bad cold for... Over a week now. That might explain the pain you've been feeling in your neck. I'm going to give you something for that cold. Conversation 3 The doctor will be right with you, Miss Rice. Have you not been feeling well? Not great, actually, and I've been sneezing like crazy. Oh, that's too bad. Anyway, today my back is killing me, so I thought, that's it, I'd better come in. Come, I'll take you in to see the doctor. Conversation 4 You're here to see Dr. Fox? Yes, I am. I've been really sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Have you been nauseous? Oh, yeah. Any vomiting? Yes. I'm afraid I've been throwing up everything I eat. Any dizziness? Not really, just nauseousness. Well, Dr. Fox will be with you in a moment. Conversation 5 You're Ms. Perlman? Yes, I am. The doctor will be with you soon. Can I ask you a few questions? Okay. What brings you in today? Well, I've been wheezing a lot since yesterday. I don't know what's wrong. It's really annoying. Are you allergic to anything? Not that I can think of. Any other symptoms? Not really. Conversation 6 Mr. Rashid? That's me. Hello, Mr. Rashid. The doctor will see you in just a moment. Are you in a lot of pain? Well, my hip has been bothering me a lot for the past two days. It hurts all the time. Hmm. Did you fall or have an accident? Not that I can remember. Any pain anywhere else? In your knees? Your elbows? No. Page 16. Pronunciation. Intonation of lists. Exercise A. Use rising intonation on each item before the last item in a list. Use falling intonation on the last item. Read and listen. 1. I feel weak and dizzy. 2. I've been sneezing, coughing, and wheezing. 3. I have pain in my neck, my shoulders, my back, and my hip. Now listen again and repeat. I feel weak and dizzy. I've been sneezing, coughing, and wheezing.
I have pain in my neck, my shoulders, my back, and my hip. Page 17. Conversation Model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone showing concern and offering help. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can come to the meeting this morning. Really? Is there anything wrong? Well, actually, I don't feel very well. I've been coughing since last night, and I feel a little short of breath. Oh, no. That must be awful. Would you like me to call a doctor? That's really nice of you, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Then call me later and let me know how you feel, okay? I will. Thanks. Page 17. Conversation Model. Exercise B. Rhythm and Intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can come to the meeting this morning. Really? Is there anything wrong? Well, actually, I don't feel very well. I've been coughing since last night, and I feel a little short of breath. Oh, no. That must be awful. Would you like me to call a doctor? That's really nice of you, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Then call me later and let me know how you feel, okay? I will. Thanks. Page 18. Vocabulary. Medical Procedures. Exercise A. Read and listen. A checkup. An examination. A shot. An injection. An EKG. An electrocardiogram. An x-ray. A blood test. Now listen again and repeat. A checkup. An examination. A shot. An injection. An EKG. An electrocardiogram. An x-ray. A blood test. Page 19. Conversation Model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone making a medical appointment. Hello, Dr. Starr's office. Can I help you? Hello, this is Ann Webb. I need to make an appointment for a blood test. I wonder if I might be able to come in early next week. Let's see if I can fit you in. How about Tuesday? Could I come in the morning? Let me check. Would you be able to be here at 10 o'clock? That would be perfect. We'll see you then. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Page 19. Conversation Model. Exercise B. Rhythm and Intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Hello, Dr. Starr's office. Can I help you? Hello. This is Ann Webb. I need to make an appointment for a blood test. I wonder if I might be able to come in early next week. Let's see if I can fit you in. How about Tuesday? Could I come in the morning? Let me check. Would you be able to be here at 10 o'clock? 
That would be perfect. We'll see you then. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Page 20. Reading. Read and listen. Consider the choices. Conventional medicine. The beginnings of conventional medicine can be traced back to the 5th century BCE in ancient Greece. It is based on the scientific study of the human body and illness. In the last century, there has been great progress in what doctors have been able to do with modern surgery and new medications. These scientific advances have made conventional medicine the method many people choose first when they need medical treatments. Homeopathy. Homeopathy was founded in the late 18th century in Germany. It is a low-cost system of natural medicine used by hundreds of millions of people worldwide. In homeopathy, a patient's symptoms are treated with remedies that cause similar symptoms. The remedy is taken in very diluted form, one part remedy to one trillion parts water. Acupuncture. Acupuncture originated in China over 5,000 years ago. Today, it is used worldwide for a variety of problems. Acupuncture needles are inserted at certain points on the body to relieve pain and or restore health. Many believe acupuncture may be effective in helping people stop smoking as well. Herbal therapy. Herbal medicine, often taken as teas or pills, has been practiced for thousands of years in almost all cultures around the world. In fact, many conventional medicines were discovered by scientists studying traditional uses of herbs for medical purposes. The World Health Organization claims that 80% of the world's population uses herbal therapies for their regular health care. Spiritual healing. Also known as faith healing or mind and body connection, various forms of spiritual healing exist around the world. This is a form of healing that uses the mind or religious faith to treat illness. A number of conventional doctors say that when they have not been able to help a patient, spiritual healing just may work. Page 22. Before you listen. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Medications. Read and listen. A painkiller. Cold tablets. A nasal spray. A decongestant. Eye drops. An antihistamine. Cough medicine. An antibiotic. An antacid. An ointment. Vitamins. Now listen again and repeat. A painkiller. Cold tablets. A nasal spray. A decongestant. Eye drops, an antihistamine, cough medicine, an antibiotic, an antacid, an ointment, vitamins. Page 22. Medicine Label Information. Listen and repeat. Dosage. Warnings. Side effects. Page 22. Listening Comprehension. Exercise A. Listen to activate vocabulary. Listen to each conversation with a doctor. Use the medications vocabulary above and the symptoms vocabulary from page 16 to complete the chart for each patient. Conversation 1. Ms. Yilmaz, I'm Dr. Lee. I understand you're here on business? That's right. I'm from Turkey, actually. 
And you are not feeling well? No, I'm afraid not. My back has been killing me for several days now. Are you taking anything? Just some painkillers, but they're not really helping. Let me give you a prescription for a stronger painkiller. I think you might find it very helpful. Does it have any side effects? Well, for very few patients, it causes nausea or vomiting, but that's very rare. I really don't think you'll have to worry. Call me if you feel at all nauseous, okay? Okay, thanks. The dosage is one tablet in the morning, one in the evening with food. The pharmacist will give you a full set of instructions when you pick up your prescription. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Conversation 2 Lucy Fernandez? I'm Dr. Hirano. Thanks so much for fitting me in. My pleasure. Where are you from? Mexico. I'm here on business. Oh, you're a long way from home. What can I do for you today? Well, I've got a splitting headache, and I've been kind of nauseous since Monday. You must feel terrible. Are you currently taking any medication? I've been taking an antacid and a painkiller. Are you allergic to any medications? I think I might be allergic to penicillin, but I'm not sure. Well, that's okay. Keep taking the painkiller for that headache, but you can stop taking the antacid. I'm going to give you a prescription for your nausea. Take it twice a day. Will there be any side effects? It might make you a little tired during the day, but chances are you'll be fine. Call me if you don't feel better. Conversation 3 Dr. Benson? Hi, I'm Mark Go. Hello, Mr. Go. I hear you're not from around here. Right. I'm visiting from Hong Kong for a few weeks. You've come a long way to see a doctor. Well, what can I do for you today? My eyes have been really red for about a week now. Have you been using any medication? Well, I got some eye drops at the drugstore, but they aren't helping. For your condition, I think you might want something stronger. I'm going to give you a prescription for an eye ointment. Use it twice a day and wash your eyes several times a day. Okay. It's a strong medication, but there aren't any side effects you need to worry about. If you keep your eyes clean, the ointment should do the trick. Thanks. Will you still be here next week? I'd like you to come back to see me. Yes, I'll still be here. Good. You can make an appointment at the front desk on your way out. Thanks, doctor. Page 23. Listening Comprehension. Exercise B. Listen for details. Listen again. Complete the information about each patient. Conversation 1. Ms. Yilmaz, I'm Dr. Lee. I understand you're here on business? That's right. I'm from Turkey, actually. And you are not feeling well? No, I'm afraid not. My back has been killing me for several days now. Are you taking anything? Just some painkillers, but they're not really helping. Let me give you a prescription for a stronger painkiller. I think you might find it very helpful. Does it have any side effects? Well, for very few patients, it causes nausea or vomiting, but that's very rare. I really don't think you'll have to worry. Call me if you feel at all nauseous, okay? Okay, thanks. The dosage is one tablet in the morning, one in the evening with food. The pharmacist will give you a full set of instructions when you pick up your prescription. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Conversation 2 Lucy Fernandez? I'm Dr. Hirano. Thanks so much for fitting me in. My pleasure. Where are you from? Mexico. I'm here on business. Oh, you're a long way from home. What can I do for you today? Well, I've got a splitting headache, and I've been kind of nauseous since Monday. You must feel terrible. Are you currently taking any medication? I've been taking an antacid and a painkiller. Are you allergic to any medications? I think I might be allergic to penicillin, but I'm not sure. Well, that's okay. Keep taking the painkiller for that headache, but you can stop taking the antacid. I'm going to give you a prescription for your nausea. Take it twice a day. Will there be any side effects? It might make you a little tired during the day, 
but chances are you'll be fine. Call me if you don't feel better. Conversation 3. Dr. Benson? Hi, I'm Mark Go. Hello, Mr. Go. I hear you're not from around here. Right. I'm visiting from Hong Kong for a few weeks. You've come a long way to see a doctor. Well, what can I do for you today? My eyes have been really red for about a week now. Have you been using any medication? Well, I got some eye drops at the drugstore, but they aren't helping. For your condition, I think you might want something stronger. I'm going to give you a prescription for an eye ointment. Use it twice a day and wash your eyes several times a day. Okay. It's a strong medication, but there aren't any side effects you need to worry about. If you keep your eyes clean, the ointment should do the trick. Thanks. Will you still be here next week? I'd like you to come back to see me. Yes, I'll still be here. Good. You can make an appointment at the front desk on your way out. Thanks, Doctor. Page 24. Exercise A. Listen to each conversation and complete the statements. Then listen again to check your answers. Conversation 1. So, what's bothering you today? Well, I've had some pain in my tooth. Here, on the right side. Let's have a look. Hmm. It looks like you lost a filling. Really? My regular dentist just put that in a month ago. Have you eaten anything hard or chewy or crunchy lately? Uh oh. I think that's it. It was probably that candy I ate two days ago. Well, how about we take care of that right now, okay? Thanks. Conversation 2. Thanks for fitting me in. I've been sneezing like crazy all day. I thought I'd better come in and get something. Allergies? Mm hmm. I get them every spring at this time. I don't know if it's the trees or the flowers or what, but my eyes get red. I sneeze. Well, I can give you a prescription to take care of that. Clear Aid is a very good antihistamine. Thanks. I'd really appreciate that. Conversation 3. You must be in a lot of pain. I am. My leg really hurts a lot. You said you were skiing? Yes. I guess I went a little too fast. Well, don't worry about that now. Let's get you into radiology and then we'll know if you've broken anything or not. Have you ever been x rayed before? Just for my teeth. Conversation 4. You look like you're in a lot of pain. Yes. My back's been killing me for several days now. I've been taking painkillers several times a day. And that hasn't helped? Not really. I still can't sit. I can't stand. All I can do is lie down. Well, I could write you a prescription for a stronger medication if you like. That might help. I don't know. Everyone says acupuncture is good for pain. Do you think I should try that? Sometimes it helps. I could give you a referral if you like. I'd like that. I need to try something else. CD 2. Unit 3. Getting Things Done. Page 27. Exercise C. Photo Story. Read and listen to some customers placing orders at a copy shop. What can I do for you today, Ms. Krause? I need to have these documents copied ASAP. Do you think you could make 300 copies by 11? I'm afraid that might be difficult. I've got a lot of orders to complete this morning. Sorry, I know this is last minute, but it's really urgent. Well, you're a good customer. I'll get someone to take care of it right away. Thanks a million. You're a lifesaver. Excuse me. Hello, happy copy. Hi, Sam. Ken Lee here. Hi, Mr. Lee. How can I help you today? Well, I'm going through my to do list. And I just realized I need to have 50 30 page sales binders made up for our meeting next week. Any chance I could have them first thing tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning? No sweat. 
Can you bring the documents in before noon? Absolutely. I owe you one, Sam. Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Krause. Well, I see you've got a lot on your plate today. I won't keep you any longer. Don't worry, Miss Krause. Your order will be ready on time. Should I give you a call later? No need for that. Come in at 11, and I'll have your documents ready. Thanks, Sam. Page 28. Conversation Model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone asking for a favor. Do you think I could borrow your car this afternoon? Mine's at the repair shop, and I need to pick up my mom at the airport. Gee, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need it. I have a doctor's appointment. No problem. I'll think of something. Hey, I have an idea. Maybe you could get Jack to lend you his car. Good idea. I'll go ask him. Page 28. Conversation Model. Exercise B. Rhythm and Intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Do you think I could borrow your car this afternoon? Mine's at the repair shop, and I need to pick up my mom at the airport. Gee, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need it. I have a doctor's appointment. No problem. I'll think of something. Hey, I have an idea. Maybe you could get Jack to lend you his car. Good idea. I'll go ask him. Page 28. Ways to indicate acceptance. Listen and repeat. No problem. I understand. No worries. Don't worry about it. Page 29. Grammar. Exercise D. Listen to activate grammar. Listen to the conversations. Complete each statement using the causative get. Conversation 1. Jody, aren't you going to the 10 o'clock meeting? Oh, hi, Jim. Actually, I can't. I have to go to the post office. The post office? Now? Well, it's actually pretty urgent. Look, Jody, it's nice that you're so self-motivated, but this meeting's important. The assistant can go for you. That's what he's here for. You're right. I'll go speak with him now. Conversation 2. Uh-oh. What's wrong, Bill? I asked the waiter for the check, but I forgot my wallet. And all these important clients are at the table. No problem. Susan has a company credit card. She can pay. Excellent idea. I'll ask her. Conversation 3. Good morning, Steve. How was the party last night? Morning, Tina. It was pretty nice, actually. I had a good time. Was Marty there? He was. Did he sing for everyone? We asked him to sing, but he said he had a cold. Too bad. He's a great singer. Conversation 4. Look at this ad. What a beauty. The L10? I hear that's a great car. I'd like to get one. Cool. You should. But I don't have the money right now. Can your parents lend you the money? You mean I should try to borrow some money from my parents? Maybe. I mean, it can't hurt to ask. You're right. I'll do that. Conversation 5. That was a great movie, wasn't it? Hilarious. I'm glad we went. Hey, let's get some coffee, okay? Oh, I can't. I need to pick the kids up from the mall. What about your husband? Can't he pick them up? You know, maybe he can. I'll give him a call right now. Conversation 6. I can't believe we're in Paris. I know. Look, there's the Eiffel Tower. Let's take a selfie. Actually, I have a better idea. Excuse me, monsieur, do you speak English? Yes, I do. How can I help you? Could you do us a favor and take our picture? My pleasure. In front of the Eiffel Tower? 
perfect. Page 30. Vocabulary. Services. Exercise A. Read and listen. 1. Dry clean a suit. 2. Repair shoes. 3. Frame a picture. 4. Deliver a package. 5. Lengthen a skirt. Shorten a skirt. 6. Print a sign. 7. Copy a report. Now listen again and repeat. Dry clean a suit. Repair shoes. Frame a picture. Deliver a package. Lengthen a skirt. Shorten a skirt. Print a sign. Copy a report. Page 31. Vocabulary. Services. Exercise C. Listen to activate vocabulary and grammar. Listen to the conversations. Complete each statement with the item and the service. Use passive causatives. Conversation 1. Look at these pans. They're way too short. You know you can get someone to lengthen them. Do you know a good tailor? You should take them to Kisco's. They do good work there. Thanks. I'll try them. Conversation 2. Hey, Carrie. Got a second? Sure, Matt. Are you guys all ready for the big meeting? Almost. I still have to get someone to make 200 copies of the agenda. Do you know a good place for that? Just take them to Al's Printing. They're right across the street. And they're pretty fast. I bet they can have them done in an hour. Thanks, Carrie. You're a lifesaver. Conversation 3. Where'd you take that photo? <laughs> oh, this one? I took that last year when we were in the south of France. You really should get someone to frame it. It's really nice. I'm thinking about it. I like it, too. Conversation 4. Hey, that's a nice sweater. Thanks. But it's got a little tomato sauce on it right here. Do you know a good dry cleaner? Well, you could try downtown cleaners. That's who I use, and I think they're pretty good. Thanks for the recommendation. Conversation 5. Okay, smile. Say cheese. Cheese! Uh-oh. What's the matter? Well, my camera isn't working right. That's too bad. You can probably have someone repair it. That's what I'm thinking. You can try Hoyt Camera. I've heard they're very good. You could probably have it repaired there the same day. Okay, I will. Conversation 6. The Mumbai office is going to need this package ASAP. You mean it hasn't been sent out yet? No, the medications just came in yesterday. Then you should use IDP services. If they pick up the package this morning, they can get it to Mumbai really fast. Good idea. Conversation 7. Hey, Lucio. How's your new restaurant doing? Business is good, actually. Thanks for asking. That's great. What's that? This is my new menu. I need to get someone to print 50 of them for me. Do you know a good place for that? Well, there's a place on Main Street. I think it's called Harrison's. They say it's the best. Thanks. Page 31. Conversation model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone requesting express service. Could I have this jacket dry cleaned by tomorrow? Tomorrow? That might be difficult. I'm sorry, but it's pretty urgent. My friend is getting married this weekend. Well, I'll see what I can do, but it won't be ready until after four. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Page 31. Conversation model. Exercise B. Rhythm and intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Could I have this jacket dry cleaned by tomorrow?
Tomorrow? That might be difficult. I'm sorry, but it's pretty urgent. My friend is getting married this weekend. Well, I'll see what I can do, but it won't be ready until after four. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Page 32. Reading. Read and listen. How can I help you? They say the customer is always right. That may not be completely true, but a smart business treats customers as though they are. Whether you work for a business or have your own, remember this secret. Customers don't really buy services and products, they buy solutions and relationships. Here's how to keep them coming back Don't procrastinate. Make sure you get things done on time. Don't waste your customers' valuable time by making them wait for service. Giving customers what they want now is key to your success, and it should be at the top of your to do list. The business that gets the job done efficiently and fast is the one that customers will come back to. Be really reliable. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If a problem keeps you from doing it, apologize and promise to find a solution. However, avoid making promises you won't be able to keep. Treat customers right by being honest, and they will recommend you to their colleagues, friends, and family. Stand by your products and services. The good workmanship and attention that go into your high quality product, excellent service, or reasonable prices will be appreciated. No one wants a product that falls apart or doesn't work. If that happens, take responsibility and arrange to repair it or replace it. Be extremely friendly and courteous as well as a good listener. Be sure your customers feel respected and heard. Pay attention to complaints as well as praise. Always try to be helpful. Sometimes it's difficult to answer a customer's question or fulfill a request. Instead of, I don't know, say, I may not have the answer right now, but I'll find out. Instead of, I don't have time right now, say, I'll make time. A can do attitude, even under stress, assures customers that you will treat them professionally and that you are ready and willing to help. Above all, make your customers feel important and valued, and always thank them for their business. Page 33 Pronunciation Emphatic stress to express enthusiasm. Read and listen. 1. They're really reliable. 2. They're incredibly helpful. 3. They're extremely professional. 4. They're so reasonable. Now listen again and repeat. They're really reliable. They're incredibly helpful. They're extremely professional. They're so reasonable. Page 34. Before you listen. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Planning and running an event. Read and listen. 1. Send out the announcements. 2. Set up the room. 3. Set up the projector. 4. Put up the signs. 5. Check the sound system. 6. A microphone. A mic. 7. A handheld mic. Eight. A lapel mic. Nine. Hand out the agenda. Ten. A handout. Eleven. Introduce the speaker. Introduce the guest. 
12. A podium. Now listen again and repeat. Send out the announcements. Set up the room. Set up the projector. Put up the signs. Check the sound system. A microphone. A mic. A handheld mic. A lapel mic. Hand out the agenda. A handout. Introduce the speaker. Introduce the guest. A podium. Page 34. Listening comprehension. Exercise A. Listen to confirm. Listen to the conversations and check the items and equipment they mention. Conversation 1. Hello, Brian. Ginny, how are you doing? I'm good, Ginny. What's up? Listen, I want to get the preparations moving for the talks at next month's event. There are a few things we need to have done. Great. How can I help? Well, I've asked someone to create an announcement, but we need someone to send them out. Do you think you could find someone to do that? No problem. That's easy. I'll get my brothers to do it. Is there anything else you need? Well, I've also asked someone to print some signs for the event. Could you ask some people to help put up the signs that morning? Sure. I'll talk to some of my friends. I'm sure they'll be willing to do it. Conversation 2. Hello, Myra. Ginny. Hey, Jin. How are you? Great. Hey, thanks for volunteering to help with the event next month. As our tech person, there are a few things you should put in your to do list for the morning of the event. Okay. We'll need someone to check the sound system in each room before 8 30. Is that okay? Of course. I'll ask some of my colleagues to do that. They're really good. And for the talks, we'll want each speaker to be able to choose a handheld mic or a lapel mic, okay? We don't want them to have to use the mic at the podium if they don't want to. Understood. I'll make sure that they set up in each room. And of course, we'll need someone to set up the projectors in each room, too. Don't worry. They can do that, too. Conversation 3. Good morning, Lester. Ginny here. Hi, Ginny. Lester, I understand you already have a team of people ready to help out on the day of the event. That's right. I've got six volunteers already. Great. We'll need to get the chairs in each room set up before 8 30, about the same time that Myra's people will be checking the sound system. Okay. How many people do you think there'll be in each room? It would be great if you could have each room set up for about 30 to 40 people. Will do. And we'll need someone at the front table to hand out the agendas. And someone at the door to each room to give people any handouts for the talks. No problem. And Lester, do you think someone can introduce each speaker as well? I may need to get a few more volunteers, but that should be no problem. Good. They'll have to be free to stand at the podium to do that. So it can't be the same person that's handing things out. Right. We'll work that out. Thanks, Lester. Page 34. Listening comprehension. Exercise B. Listen for main ideas. Listen again. Use the vocabulary and the causative to complete the statements. Conversation 1. Hello, Brian. Ginny, how are you doing? I'm good, Ginny. What's up? Listen, I want to get the preparations moving for the talks at next month's event. There are a few things we need to have done. Great. How can I help? Well, I've asked someone to create an announcement, but we need someone to send them out. Do you think you could find someone to do that? No problem. That's easy. I'll get my brothers to do it. Is there anything else you need? Well, I've also asked someone to print some signs for the event. Could you ask some people to help put up the signs that morning? Sure. I'll talk to some of my friends. I'm sure they'll be willing to do it. Conversation 2. Hello, Myra. Ginny. Hey, Jin. How are you? Great. Hey, thanks for volunteering to help with the event next month. As our tech person, there are a few things you should put in your to do list for the morning of the event. Okay. We'll need someone to check the sound system in each room before 8 30. Is that okay? Of course. I'll ask some of my colleagues to do that.
They're really good. And for the talks, we'll want each speaker to be able to choose a handheld mic or a lapel mic, okay? We don't want them to have to use the mic at the podium if they don't want to. Understood. I'll make sure that they set up in each room. And of course, we'll need someone to set up the projectors in each room, too. Don't worry. They can do that, too. Conversation 3 Good morning, Lester. Ginny here. Hi, Ginny. Lester, I understand you already have a team of people ready to help out on the day of the event. That's right. I've got six volunteers already. Great. We'll need to get the chairs in each room set up before 8.30, about the same time that Myra's people will be checking the sound system. Okay. How many people do you think there'll be in each room? It would be great if you could have each room set up for about 30 to 40 people. Will do. And we'll need someone at the front table to hand out the agendas. And someone at the door to each room to give people any handouts for the talks. No problem. And Lester, do you think someone can introduce each speaker as well? I may need to get a few more volunteers, but that should be no problem. Good. They'll have to be free to stand at the podium to do that. So it can't be the same person that's handing things out. Right. We'll work that out. Thanks, Lester. Page 36. Exercise A. Listen to each conversation. Then complete the statements using the passive causative with have. Listen again if necessary. Conversation 1. I'd like to have this dress dry cleaned. Okay. It'll be ready on Monday. Actually, it's kind of urgent. Any chance I could have it by Friday? I'll see what I can do. Conversation 2. I need to have these pants shortened. Can I get them back by Wednesday? I don't know. We're pretty busy this week. I'd really appreciate it. We'll try. But they might not be ready until Thursday, okay? Conversation 3. I'd like to have a sign printed. Does it take long to do? Just one sign? Not too long. You can have it by Thursday. Gee, could I have it done a little sooner? I'm in a bit of a rush. How about Wednesday? Is that okay? That would be perfect. Thanks a million. Conversation 4. Can you do a rush job for me? That depends. What do you need to have done? I just need to have this picture framed. Can I have it by 4? Today? I'm sorry, that wouldn't be possible. But I could have it for you first thing in the morning. Okay, that would be great. Unit 4. Reading for Pleasure. Page 38. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Genres of books. Read and listen. Fiction. A novel. A mystery. A thriller. A romance novel. A science fiction book. A short story. Nonfiction. A biography. An autobiography. A travel book. A memoir. A self-help book. Now listen again and repeat. A novel. A mystery. A thriller. A romance novel. A science fiction book. A short story. A biography. An autobiography. A travel book. A memoir. A self-help book. Page 39. Exercise C. Photo story. Read and listen to a conversation between two friends at a bookstore. Hey, Sophie. I've never run into you here before. Lynn, good to see you. Looking for anything special? No, I'm just browsing. How about you? I'm just picking up some gardening magazines for my mom. She can't get enough of them. So, anything interesting? This one doesn't look bad. It's a biography of Helen Keller. What about you? Are you reading anything good these days? 
Well, I've got a new mystery on my night table, but I can't seem to get into it. I guess mysteries just aren't my thing. I know what you mean. They put me to sleep. Well, you're a big reader. I wonder if you could recommend something for me. Have you read the new John Grisham thriller? No, I haven't. I didn't know he had a new book out. Well, I can't put it down. It's a real page turner. Thanks for the tip. Do you think I could borrow it when you're done with it? Of course. If you can wait till the end of the week, I'd be happy to lend it to you. Page 40. Vocabulary. Ways to describe a book. Exercise A. Read and listen. A page turner. A cliffhanger. A bestseller. A fast read. Hard to follow. Trash. Now listen again and repeat. A page turner. A cliffhanger. A bestseller. A fast read. Hard to follow. Trash. Page 41. Pronunciation. Sentence stress in short answers with so. Exercise A. Read and listen. Notice the stress on the verb in short answers with so. One. Are there a lot of characters in the story? I think so. Two. Has she read that book yet? I don't think so. Three. Do you think this thriller will be good? I hope so. Four. Does the story have a happy ending? I believe so. Now listen again and repeat. Are there a lot of characters in the story? I think so. Has she read that book yet? I don't think so. Do you think this thriller will be good? I hope so. Does the story have a happy ending? I believe so. Page 41. Conversation model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone recommending a book. Have you read anything interesting lately? Actually, I'm reading a thriller called Don't Close Your Eyes. I've never heard of that one. Is it any good? Oh, I think it's a great book, and it's a cliffhanger. I highly recommend it. Well, do you think I could borrow it when you're done? I love cliffhangers. Sure. I doubt I'll finish it before next week, though. No problem. I can wait. Page 41. Conversation model. Exercise B. Rhythm and intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Have you read anything interesting lately? Actually, I'm reading a thriller called Don't Close Your Eyes. I've never heard of that one. Is it any good? Oh, I think it's a great book. And it's a cliffhanger. I highly recommend it. Well, do you think I could borrow it when you're done? I love cliffhangers.
Sure. I doubt I'll finish it before next week, though. No problem. I can wait. Page 42. Conversation model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone asking about an article. Is that this month's car magazine? Yes, it is. Could you tell me where you bought it? I can't find it anywhere. At the newsstand across the street. But I think it's sold out. Too bad. There's an article in there about SUVs. I'm dying to read it. I can understand why. It was really interesting. Listen, take my copy. I'm done with it. Are you sure? Definitely. Page 42. Conversation model. Exercise B. Rhythm and intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. Is that this month's car magazine? Yes, it is. Could you tell me where you bought it? I can't find it anywhere. At the newsstand across the street. But I think it's sold out. Too bad. There's an article in there about SUVs. I'm dying to read it. I can understand why. It was really interesting. Listen, take my copy. I'm done with it. Are you sure? Definitely. Page 44. Before you listen. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Some ways to enjoy reading. Read and listen. Curl up with a book. Read aloud to someone. Listen to audiobooks. Do puzzles. Read articles online. Skim through a newspaper. Read ebooks. Read electronic books. Now listen again and repeat. Curl up with a book. Read aloud to someone. Listen to audiobooks. Do puzzles. Read articles online. Skim through a newspaper. Read ebooks. Read electronic books. Page 44. Listening comprehension. Listen to take notes. Listen and take notes to answer these questions about each speaker. Listen again if necessary. Betty's Song There's nothing I like more than curling up with a good book. I like all kinds of literature, novels, general fiction, short stories. I also read a lot of books written by Japanese authors translated into Chinese. My favorite author, though, is Chang Ailing. She is a very famous author from China. Her work has inspired women for many generations. I like to read whenever I have a bit of quiet time, like early in the morning or during lunch hour, and at night when I'm lying in bed. I usually read in a small room next to my living room. It's like a small library with good natural sunlight. I really don't enjoy reading in coffee shops or other public places. I need a quiet space to read. For me, reading is a spiritual experience that gives me great personal satisfaction. Television and movies can't do that. 
I can't understand why anyone doesn't enjoy reading. I can't think of any better way to relax, to forget the pressure of each day. Silvio Ferrante, I really like to keep up with the news. I get the paper delivery on weekends, so that's when I enjoy reading it most, pretty much from the first to the last page. During the week, I enjoy skimming through the newspaper in a cafe, but the weekend is the best time. There's nothing like lying in bed with the paper, a good cup of coffee, and some croissants or toast. Or, when the weather's nice, sitting in the garden and reading about what's going on in the world. And, well, I have to admit, one of my favorite places to read is in the, mm, well, bathroom. I can spend a good half hour there reading the paper. Aside from newspapers, I really enjoy stopping at newsstands and spending about five or ten minutes browsing through magazines. And of course, I also enjoy going to bookshops and checking out the latest novels, particularly historical novels. I just can't seem to read enough of those. Melissa White I don't really consider myself to be a big reader because I don't actually read a lot of books. Most of the reading I do is either on the internet or in newspapers. I can't start my day without skimming through the newspaper during breakfast, checking out what's going on in local news or maybe what's going on in business. Mainly, I just look for the articles that look interesting, and I save them for later when I get back home from work. Then I like to curl up on the sofa with my newspaper and a good cup of tea. The truth is, I don't have a lot of time for reading books, and I don't have a lot of interest in reading them. Once in a while, I'll read one of the bestsellers or a good romance novel. But I spend a lot more time surfing the internet, checking out my favorite blogs. That's where I get my information from and my entertainment. It works for me. Page 46. Reading. Read and listen. Reading Habits in Transition. Most experts agree that the Internet has fundamentally changed how we read, think, and remember things. However, whether this has had a positive or negative impact is still unknown. How has the Internet changed the way we read? There is evidence that we are reading fewer books, particularly nonfiction. Let's say you need medical advice, cooking instructions, or biographical information. Who wants to buy a 300-page book when you can find a 300-word article on the Internet about the same subject? It's easier to read, it's free, and it's a lot faster. However, we are, in fact, reading a lot more overall. In addition to our offline reading, we read online throughout the day as we check our smartphones, surf the Internet, visit social media sites, and catch up on our email. We also do a lot more skimming and scanning on the Internet than we do when we read physical books or periodicals, such as magazines and newspapers. As we surf the Internet, we skim quickly for topics that interest us and scan for the specific information we need. A search engine puts millions of possibilities at our fingertips. How has the Internet changed how we think and remember? Before there was an Internet, people spent a lot of time taking notes in libraries so they could remember and recall information easily. Today, when you can use a search engine to take you to what you're looking for in an instant, that kind of concentration isn't as necessary. You can simply bookmark any page and return to it easily. However, Many argue that online information sources often contain errors and can't be trusted, so we need to be more careful when we use them. Some wonder if the Internet has made it more difficult to concentrate on one task without getting distracted by other things. We are constantly interrupted by updates from social media sites and email messages. We follow links to other websites where we find more links to other websites and jump from topic to topic. We are also bombarded with a lot of junk. 
For example, news feeds about celebrities, pop-up ads about products we don't want or need, and warnings about viruses. Some consider what we read on the Internet to be trash compared to traditional offline reading, while others see many advantages in the reading we do on the Internet. Some argue that reading on the Internet is like exercise for the brain, making it easier for us to cope with distractions and think clearly as we learn to make choices that work for us. In a recent study, 81% of those surveyed agreed that our use of the Internet has actually made us smarter. If you are a digital native, that is, someone who grew up with the Internet, that's very good news indeed. Page 48. Exercise A. Listen to each conversation and write the type of book each person is discussing. Conversation 1. I'm reading a new mystery by Smithson. Really? Is it any good? Oh, it's a real cliffhanger. I can't wait to get to the ending. Then don't tell me how it ends. I might want to read it too. I'll let you borrow it. Thanks. Conversation 2. How's that travel book you're reading? Well, apparently it's a bestseller. Oh, yeah? Must be good. Actually, I can't get into it. It's not a fast read at all. Oh. Conversation 3. When are you going to finish that romance novel? Pretty soon. To tell the truth, it's really trash. But you know something? I just can't put it down. I don't get it. Why are you reading it if it's trash? I can't help it. It's a page-turner. I've really been getting into it. Conversation 4 I'm reading an autobiography by a famous Italian artist. Wow, that must be interesting. I guess it should be, but I'm just not really into it. Don't you like autobiographies? Sure, I love them. Just not this one. Listen again and decide if the person likes the book. Explain your answer. Conversation 1. I'm reading a new mystery by Smithson. Really? Is it any good? Oh, it's a real cliffhanger. I can't wait to get to the ending. Then don't tell me how it ends. I might want to read it too. I'll let you borrow it. Thanks. Conversation 2. How's that travel book you're reading? Well, apparently it's a bestseller. Oh, yeah? Must be good. Actually, I can't get into it. It's not a fast read at all. Oh. Conversation 3. When are you going to finish that romance novel? Pretty soon. To tell the truth, it's really trash. But you know something? I just can't put it down. I don't get it. Why are you reading it if it's trash? I can't help it. It's a page turner. I've really been getting into it. Conversation 4. I'm reading an autobiography by a famous Italian artist. Wow, that must be interesting. I guess it should be, but I'm just not really into it. Don't you like autobiographies? Sure, I love them. Just not this one. CD 3. <music> Unit 5. Natural Disasters Page 51 Exercise B Photo Story Read and listen to a conversation about a natural disaster. Oh my goodness, take a look at this. Why? What's going on? There's this enormous flood in Slovakia. Look at these people on the roof. The water's up to the second floor. And look at these cars. I sure hope there was no one in them. That sounds horrendous. Any word on casualties? It says no reports of deaths or injuries so far, but it's in the middle of a city, for goodness sake. The death toll could end up being huge. And can you imagine the property damage? Well, they estimate almost 50% of the houses in town are underwater already. What a disaster. I wonder how this flood compares to the one they had in New Orleans a few years back. Remember that? You bet I do. How could anyone forget? And that flooded almost half the city, too. Let's turn on CNN. They usually have breaking news about stuff like this. Page 52. 
page 52. Pronunciation. Direct and indirect speech. Rhythm. Exercise A. Notice the rhythm of sentences in direct and indirect speech. Read and listen. He said, be home before midnight. He said to be home before midnight. I told your parents, get a flu shot at the clinic. I told your parents to get a flu shot at the clinic. Now listen again and repeat. He said, be home before midnight. He said to be home before midnight. I told your parents, get a flu shot at the clinic. I told your parents to get a flu shot at the clinic. Page 53. Conversation Model. Exercise A. Read and listen to someone conveying a message. I'm on the phone with your parents. Would you like to say hello? I would, but I'm running late. Anything you'd like me to tell them? Yes. Please tell them to turn on the TV. There's a storm on the way. Will do. Page 53. Conversation model. Exercise B. Rhythm and intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. I'm on the phone with your parents. Would you like to say hello? I would, but I'm running late. Anything you'd like me to tell them? Yes, please tell them to turn on the TV. There's a storm on the way. Will do. Page 54. Vocabulary. Severe weather and other natural disasters. Exercise A. Read and listen. A tornado. A hurricane. A typhoon. A flood. A landslide. A drought. Now listen again and repeat. A tornado. A hurricane. A typhoon. A flood. A landslide. A drought. Page 54. Vocabulary. Exercise B. Listen to infer. Listen to the news. Write the kind of event the report describes. Report 1. Brazil farmers report the loss of dairy and beef cattle. There has been no measurable rainfall in three months, and the dry land cannot feed their animals. Report 2. The rain hasn't stopped in a week, and people nearest the river are moving out of their houses because the roads are covered in water. Report 3. The storm's winds reached a record 150 kilometers per hour, and the torrential rains are expected to continue for at least six more hours. Trees are down, and areas nearest the beaches are heavily damaged. Report 4. 
A fast-moving, dark, funnel-shaped cloud is making its way across the eastern side of town, knocking down trees. Roofs on many houses have blown off. Residents are urged to immediately go underground and take cover until the danger has passed. Page 54. Vocabulary. Exercise C. Listen to confirm information. Listen again. After each report, say if the statement is true or false. Explain your answers. Report 1. Brazil farmers report the loss of dairy and beef cattle. There has been no measurable rainfall in three months, and the dry land cannot feed their animals. Report 2. The rain hasn't stopped in a week, and people nearest the river are moving out of their houses because the roads are covered in water. Report 3. The storm's winds reached a record 150 kilometers per hour, and the torrential rains are expected to continue for at least six more hours. Trees are down and areas nearest the beaches are heavily damaged. Report 4 a fast-moving, dark, funnel-shaped cloud is making its way across the eastern side of town, knocking down trees. Roofs on many houses have blown off. Residents are urged to immediately go underground and take cover until the danger has passed. Page 55. Conversation Model Exercise A. Read and listen to a conversation about the news. What's going on in the news today? Well, the Times says there was a terrible storm in the south. Really? Yes. It says lots of houses were destroyed. What a shame. But there haven't been any deaths. Thank goodness for that. Page 55. Conversation model. Exercise B. Rhythm and intonation. Listen again and repeat. Then practice the conversation model with a partner. What's going on in the news today? Well, the Times says there was a terrible storm in the south. Really? Yes, it says lots of houses were destroyed. What a shame. But there haven't been any deaths. Thank goodness for that. Page 56. Before you read. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Adjectives of severity. Read and listen. Mild. Moderate. Severe. Deadly. Catastrophic. Now listen again and repeat. Mild. Moderate, severe, deadly, catastrophic. Page 56. Reading. Read and listen. Earthquakes. Earthquakes are among the deadliest natural disasters causing the largest numbers of casualties, the highest death tolls, and the greatest destruction. In 1556 in China, the deadliest earthquake in history killed 830,000 people. 
But many other earthquakes have caused the deaths of more than 200,000 people, and it is not unusual, even in modern times, for an earthquake death toll to reach 20,000 to 30,000 people with hundreds of thousands left homeless and with countless injured. The floodwaters of the 2004 tsunami in Sumatra, which killed over 200,000 people, were caused by a catastrophic earthquake. There are four factors that affect the casualty rate of earthquakes. Magnitude, location, quality of construction of buildings, and timing. Magnitude. The magnitude, or strength, of an earthquake is measured on the Richter scale, ranging from 1 to 10, with 10 being the greatest. Earthquakes over 6 on the Richter scale are often deadly, and those over 8 are generally catastrophic, causing terrible damage. Location. A severe earthquake that is located far from population centers does not cause the same damage as a less severe one that occurs in the middle of a city. As an example, in 1960, the strongest earthquake ever recorded, 9.5 magnitude on the Richter scale, struck in the Pacific Ocean near the Chilean coastline, destroying buildings, killing over 2,000, and injuring another 3,000 in regional cities near the coast. The location of this earthquake, far away from a population center, however, prevented it from being catastrophic, with hundreds of thousands of deaths. Quality of construction. Modern building construction techniques can lessen the death toll and economic impact of a moderate earthquake that would otherwise cause severe destruction of older style buildings. In 2010, a terrible earthquake in Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti, caused the destruction of a tremendous number of the city's buildings, mostly due to poor construction. In contrast, an even stronger earthquake later that year in Chile caused less destruction because of that country's use of earthquake-resistant construction. Timing. Finally, the time of occurrence of an earthquake can affect the number of deaths and casualties. Earthquakes that occur in the night when people are indoors, usually cause a greater death toll than ones that occur when people are outdoors. Page 58. Before you listen. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Emergency preparations and supplies. Read and listen. Evacuate. An emergency. A power outage. A shelter. A first aid kit. A flashlight. Non perishable food. Now listen again and repeat. Evacuate. An emergency. A power outage. A shelter. A first aid kit. A flashlight. Non-perishable food. Page 58. Listening Comprehension. Exercise A. Listen for main ideas. Listen to an emergency radio broadcast. Write a sentence to describe the emergency the broadcaster is reporting. Today is Monday, October 11th. This is a government weather service update on Tropical Storm Maria, which is approaching our area. The storm is expected to arrive between 9 and 11 a.m. tomorrow. This is an extremely dangerous storm with high winds and heavy rain. Flooding is expected and evacuation may be necessary. The following are emergency procedures that all area residents should follow. 1. Fill your car with gas now in case evacuation is necessary. 2. Bring outdoor furniture, tools, and other objects inside. They can be dangerous in high winds. 3. Close all windows and cover windows with wooden boards. When the storm hits, don't go near windows in case the wind causes the glass to break. 4. Turn your refrigerator and freezer to very cold and only open when necessary to preserve perishable food in the event of a power outage. 5. 
Buy extra batteries for flashlights in case there is a power outage or an evacuation. 6. If you don't have a portable, battery operated radio, buy one today and have a good supply of extra batteries for the radio. Listen to the radio for official instructions in case evacuation is necessary. 7. Check your first aid kit. Be sure it contains bandages painkillers, and antiseptic in case of minor injuries. 8. Put valuable papers in a waterproof container on the highest floor of your home in case of flooding. 9. Get a supply of non-perishable food and water. You may have to stay indoors for several days, and local water supplies may be contaminated by flooding. If evacuation becomes necessary, 1. Leave as soon as possible. Avoid flooded roads. Follow radio instructions for the best and safest evacuation route. 2. Listen to the radio for the location of shelters serving your neighborhood. 3. Take all emergency supplies and warm clothing and blankets to the shelter. 4. Lock your home and leave. Page 58. Listening Comprehension. Exercise B. Listen for details. Listen again and correct each of the following false statements using indirect speech. Today is Monday, October 11th. This is a Government Weather Service update on Tropical Storm Maria, which is approaching our area. The storm is expected to arrive between 9 and 11 a.m. tomorrow. This is an extremely dangerous storm with high winds and heavy rain. Flooding is expected and evacuation may be necessary. The following are emergency procedures that all area residents should follow. 1. Fill your car with gas now in case evacuation is necessary. 2. Bring outdoor furniture, tools, and other objects inside. They can be dangerous in high winds. Three. Close all windows and cover windows with wooden boards. When the storm hits, don't go near windows in case the wind causes the glass to break. 4. Turn your refrigerator and freezer to very cold and only open when necessary to preserve perishable food in the event of a power outage. 5. Buy extra batteries for flashlights in case there is a power outage or an evacuation. 6. If you don't have a portable, battery-operated radio, buy one today and have a good supply of extra batteries for the radio. Listen to the radio for official instructions in case evacuation is necessary. 7. Check your first aid kit. Be sure it contains bandages, painkillers, and antiseptic in case of minor injuries. 8. Put valuable papers in a waterproof container on the highest floor of your home in case of flooding. 9. Get a supply of non-perishable food and water. You may have to stay indoors for several days, and local water supplies may be contaminated by flooding. If evacuation becomes necessary, 1. Leave as soon as possible. Avoid flooded roads. Follow radio instructions for the best and safest evacuation route. 2. Listen to the radio for the location of shelters serving your neighborhood. 3. Take all emergency supplies and warm clothing and blankets to the shelter. 4. Lock your home and leave. Page 60. Exercise A. Listen to the report. The reporter describes three kinds of disasters. Listen carefully and check the ones that fall into the categories she describes. Listen again if necessary. Good morning, listeners. Today we'll be discussing some of the worst natural disasters of the last century. It's hard to imagine events with death tolls over a million, but believe it or not, they're surprisingly common. Once in the last century, a lack of rainfall killed over a million people. And twice, too much water has done the same thing. 
But the worst disasters by far are episodes of sickness that affect millions. Five were situations where over a million people died.